Okay, so today is an episode that I am extremely, extremely excited about. First of all, it's our first interview ever on Toys Food Chronicles. The second thing is what we're talking about. So I got a couple of questions for you guys. For all of my home cooks out there, have you ever thought about starting your uh, business? So going from home cook into maybe a pop-up stand or maybe a food truck or maybe uh, a brick and mortar business having your own actual restaurant. During this crazy pandemic, there is one man who did so. So he started from his home and then went and did pop-up stands around the city here in Tampa, Florida. And then he started his own uh, restaurant, brick and mortar building, which is the opposite of what everyone else has been doing uh, during the course of this pandemic, and it has been successful for him. So today we're talking with Pedro Miranda, and check this interview out. I think you all will be encouraged by this. I do want to say that today's video is definitely sponsored by Pop Culture Specialty Popcorn. I am also an affiliate of Pop Culture Specialty Popcorn. So you can find a link in the description to purchase popcorn from him. He does send around the world. And if you use the promo code Toys Food Chronicles, you get 20% off of your order. So that is awesome. Link also in the description, just at checkout, promo code Toys Food Chronicles. So welcome to Toys Food Chronicles. Once again, my name is Toy, and we are bringing people together through the soul and spirit of food. And trust and believe that is definitely happening today with our first interview. Today, we have Pedro Miranda, really good friend of mine, extraordinaire. He went from having a whole cook business to pop-up stand to brick and mortar business and he's going to tell us how we can do that today okay Pedro so my first question is what is your background with cooking in general well Tori that's a great question the food service industry runs in my family and is uh, deep in my veins my uh, father came from Cuba in the 60s and started off a small food truck business, believe it or not, in the late 60s, early 70s, up north, serving Cuban sandwiches, black beans and rice. Down the road, he uh, moved to sunny Florida and opened a Cuban restaurant and a small steakhouse eventually. And then later on, he even became a food service equipment manufacturer. That's kind of around the time that I came in the picture. And personally, my first ever job was as a busboy at the local Greasy Spoon Diner. And uh, since then, I've had a career in food service, most recently, also as a representative for a food service equipment manufacturer. Uh, since then, I decided I'd, I was ready to venture off on my own and begin Awful Waffle Specialty Waffles and Pop Culture Specialty Popcorn. So we definitely want the people out there to know how they can come from just cooking different things in their home and taking it to the storefront. So what can you tell someone who's looking to get into the food industry? Well, Toy, I'd say first off, be prepared to work longer and harder than you've ever imagined or worked before. Yeah, that's no joke. But once you can accept that and, and get past that, I'd probably start by considering and pondering, you know, what makes you different? What makes your food specialty different? What's that value proposition that you can deliver to your customer or or to the person you're serving. And then lastly, my advice would be to take baby steps. One of the best things I've done was start off real small, just the, the local farmer's market, gauging product market fit, trying to understand how to improve my product, how to improve my brand, before taking the big plunge into brick, brick and mortar. So what is your relationship with the food industry from a business perspective? Well, Toy, most recently in my career, I have uh, been a food service equipment manufacturer representative. So we manufacture complete lines of food service equipment, and we get to interact on a daily basis with equipment distributors or operators. And then in those interactions with different operators, I got to learn a lot about what it's like to operate a food service business. And I figured out that there's a lot to learn. So as a result, I started by my process of exploration, 
and understanding from a culinary perspective what needs to be understood from a food restaurant business perspective what needs to be understood. And as I went down checking those boxes, I was able to really understand from a, have a more complete understanding of the food service business as a whole. So, uh, with that being a factor, are you still in the industry where you work with the uh, machinery and uh, industry uh, commercial equipment? Yes, I still represent different restaurant equipment manufacturers, and that's my second, third, fourth full-time job, however you want to look at it. Uh, but it's fantastic. It keeps me motivated, keeps me informed with the latest trends, uh, and helps me be uh, you know, sharper my pencil, so to speak. This is something that most people want to know, because everybody has to have this. Uh, so what is your mission with your business? My mission is creating memories and smiles in the form of indulgent treats. Uh, there's nothing more gratifying than seeing a family or friends gathering, uh, enjoying our food, uh, and sharing and, and breaking bread together. So you have uh, a popcorn business here. So, but you started that from your home, which is awesome. So I definitely want to hit that aspect because these are our average home cooks that we're talking to and backyard grill cooks. With that being a factor, what came to your mind when you were thinking, I'm going to make specialty popcorn at home? Well, Toy, um, during the COVID-19 outbreak and uh, quarantine, just like everyone, I was stuck at home, unable to operate my specialty waffle business. And I was popping popcorn and snacking and watching movies, just like a lot of us probably were. And I started getting creative and taking some of my toppings, like marshmallows, sprinkles, candy bars, peanuts, and different nuts, and experimenting with popping a bag of popcorn in the microwave and playing around with different toppings. And really, that was the birthplace of pop culture, especially popcorn. All righty, so when did you know, what was the time where you knew that people would actually purchase this and I want to sell it. When did that come to your mind? So, after burning a lot of packs of popcorn and ruining a lot of batches and starting to develop more and more of a process and, and a better product, I was finally brave enough to start sharing it with some friends and some family. And that's just what I did. Anytime I would get together with friends and family, uh, would bring, deliver a bag of popcorn, have them try and tell me what they thought. So luckily I had a lot of willing uh, guinea pigs and, and test participants, and uh, they helped kind of give me that honest feedback I needed that, hey, this is what you need to do, this is what I liked about it, this is what I would change. All right, in the midst of this, so you went from uh, home, pop-up stand, then brick and mortar. What was the thing that, decide, that got you going to make the pop-up portion of this? Well, Toy, after exploring all my options and my limited budget, I just realized it was the best option for me to uh, test and understand product market fit. Uh, that was a huge uh, question mark that I had. It was, how does this product fit into this market and how will the market uh, awesome. receive that product? Yeah. Awesome. From there, how did you know that you wanted to start a brick and mortar business? Because I'm assuming the pop-up was going pretty well because you kept doing it. Well, Toy, I would regularly get phone calls from folks asking if we were open, what our hours were, if we had uh, vegan options. And you know, this was during the pop-up process and while I had our website up. So I started to understand, wait a second, I think there's a demand here for our specialty popcorn uh, and specialty waffle products that I can't meet just on a weekend basis. Um, and then moreover, after our last pop-up, our most recent pop-up, where our entire concessions cart was blown over by a strong thunderstorm, the search for brick and mortar really ramped up. Do you have a slogan that you guys go by at all? Yeah, Toy, our uh, slogan is, it's good to be bad. It really embodies our products as an indulgent treat. Maybe it's your favorite salty snack, maybe it's your favorite sweet delight, your little cheat meal. Uh, so it's good to be back. What does the future hold for uh, pop culture specialty popcorn? Well, what do you think the future holds for it? <laughs> well, we're dreaming big, Toy. We're starting off small, uh, doing everything small batch, handcrafted, just the way we did in our kitchen here in the shop. 
but we're hoping to grow our presence, grow our following, and we'd love to have more and more locations and our popcorn in store shelves. So now I want to ask, if people want advice on how to go from home cook or cooking in their home where they feel like they've created something that's very special, that people, that could resonate with people, and they wanted to start a brick and mortar or wanted to start a pop-up, what would you suggest for them? And do you give this expertise out? Do you communicate to people and give advice on it? Absolutely, Toy. It would be my pleasure for any of your viewers to reach out to me, any question at all. I'd love to share from my experience and my expertise. And then my recommendation would be take baby steps, chase your dream, and really understand what makes you different. Find the, those key differentiators and what your value proposition is. So I want people to know how they can get a hold of you, how they can get in touch with Awful Waffle. So if you're in Tampa, Florida at any given time, you need to stop in the NoHo District. And when you come down here, you need to come to see him at Awful Waffle and Pop Culture Specialty Popcorn. Make it your business to come down here when you come in town. They are a fan favorite in town. I love them. They are awesome. Come see Pedro Miranda and their team here. And you, I promise, you will enjoy it. Look them up in Google search. Make sure you find them uh, and come on down and eat with them. It's gonna be fun. There's other restaurants in here, but today we're lifted up pop culture popcorn. So, Pedro, how can everyone find you? Are you guys on Instagram? Are you guys on YouTube? Are you guys on Google search? How can they find you? Yeah, totally. So you can find us at all the above mentioned ways. Of course, love to, for you to come down to the shop here at NoHo Junction, located at 1500 West Cass Street in Tampa, Florida. If you just want to drop us a line, the phone number is online. It's 813-992-2855. Um, or all the social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, at Awful Waffle US, or at Pop Culture, Specialty Popcorn, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, would love to hear from you and love to serve you. Alrighty, so this is the Flash Gordon Rail. You gotta be quick. So the reason why we're calling this Flash Gordon, y'all know the Flash Gordon is. He's really, 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 really fast which is why they call it Flash. So, uh, we're gonna flash through these questions and that means you have to answer quickly. So, favorite movie of all time? Forrest Gump. Gremlins. All right. <laughs> uh, favorite book of all time? Oof. Well, right now I'm reading the Quick Books for Restaurants by Zach Weiner. Perfect, all righty. And my favorite book is a long title and I'm I'm gonna say it one day, you'll know my favorite book soon. All right, so, favorite bag of popcorn here? Ooh, the sweet and cheesy blend. It's a blend between my caramel romance, our traditional caramel popcorn, and our queso queso. All right, I don't know the name of the bag of the popcorn, but it's very cinnamony and chocolatey. It's pretty spicy. Spicy chocolate popcorn, whichever that one is called. What, what is that called? It's our Mexican hot chocolate popcorn. You need to try the Mexican hot chocolate popcorn. I'm telling you, I've had several bags of this popcorn and I like them all, but I'm a child, you know, I'm chocolate and I like chocolate. So with that being of the truth, I'm telling you, try that Mexican chocolate popcorn and anything that he suggests, because he makes dope popcorn. It's just really, really good. All right. Next, a flash one. What is your favorite waffle cone here? My favorite waffle here is the Salty Pig Pop. The Salty Pig Waffle Pop is a chocolate or vanilla waffle on a stick, freshly baked, coated in milk chocolate, and then we sprinkle on some cooked bacon, some pecans, and then top it off with some gourmet chocolate and caramel sauce. I think I'm gonna get to try that today. Thank you. It's just silly. It's funny. What would you do for a fun night bar? <laughs> well, on a hot Tampa day, just about anything. 
definitely um, would probably, I'd say I'd run five miles for one. I would run five miles if they gave me a Klondike bar and a Popsicle and a Coca-Cola <laughs> that was on ice prior to handing it to me. Oh, I, I love a good Klondike bar. <laughs> me too. All right. Guys, it has been wonderful. As I always say, don't love to receive love, love to love. Okay guys, thank you for watching this interview today. If you find any value in what we're doing here on Toys Food Chronicles, definitely smash that like button, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel to get your updates on everything that we're gonna be doing here. We have more interviews to come, and I am extremely excited. Uh, I guess it's a videographer thing or a photographer thing when they go whoosh, He ain't lying. That is so good. And that ain't no joke. That's, that's, that's just, boy, I tell you. Sloppy don't get no better. <laughs> Never had a waffle this good. Succulent. One word. <laughs> no more bacon this year. All right. All right.